Hello, I decided to do just a little bit more on variables just to show you that we can do more than increase them by one at a time. Uh, for the first couple of videos, I just kind of took the simple route and we were counting and we were adding one. I want to show you that we can do lots of different things with uh, variables as far as um, manipulating them. Um, I'm going to use the same variable that I had before. It was that number variable and we'll just we'll leave it up here to keep track of it. Uh, as usual, we'll do the event when it the green flag is checked and uh, I always like to send Scratch to the middle of the screen just to make sure that he's not running away on me. Okay, so he'll start at zero, zero. Uh, I want to uh, set my variable. So my variable to, I make this mistake all the time because it says set my variable to zero. Uh, if for some reason, I think the computer should know what variable that is. Always click it and actually, you know, get the one that you want. In this case, number was the one I created. So set number to zero. So that sort of just gets everything back to, you know, front and center. All the variables are back to zero, and then we can do what we want with them. Okay, so let's uh, let's set a little a control event here where maybe we do a repeat for um, 10, 10 iterations, okay? 10 times through the loop. And instead of just adding one to the variable this time, let's do this. Let's, um, okay, let's change my variable by, instead of just by one, okay, what I can do is I can, instead of changing my variable, Okay, I can set my variable to something just like I did up here. So if you want to change it by two or three or negative one or negative two, it'll count up by twos, four, sixes. If you say um, change my variable by negative two, it'll count down by two. So it'll go zero, negative two, negative four. That's basically just the adding and subtracting version, but you can get it to multiply too, right? That's not, that's not a big deal. So if our number variable is set to zero, I can set number to whatever I want and I can, I can, put any kind of math in there using operators, right? So what if I say I'm going to set my my variable to whatever number is times two? Okay, so I'm just going to go grab my numbers. So I'm going to set number, whoop, that needs to go in there. So I'm going to set number to whatever it is times two. And then watch what happens when I loop through this and I've got a, I'm just going to make it wait for a second. Uh, I could also make scratch stand, which maybe can be easier. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're going to loop this 10 times. I'm going to have scratch say, instead of saying hello, he's just going to say whatever the number is for one second. And it'll also be displayed up at the top, so it doesn't, you know, you'll, you'll see it two places. So we're going to have scratch say the number for a second, and then we're going to take that number, and we're going to multiply it by two. Now, <laughs> important note, if the variable starts at zero, and you multiply it by two, you still get zero. So you're gonna get zero forever, right? So if you're ever using multiplication, you better start your variable at one. Otherwise it's gonna be a, a long program of zeros. So let's just uh, let's just run this thing and see what happens. One, two, four, and then eight, and then 16, and then 32. And he's gonna do this 10 times, right? So when he gets to the 10th time, then he's done, 1024. So we didn't just add one, to our, uh, to our variable every time we went through the loop, we multiplied what it was by two. Um, you could have, we could have divided it. So let's let's have a look. I'm not, I can't remember exactly how it handles decimals. So let's see. Instead of uh, multiplying it by two, let's divide it by two and see, see what he does. Theoretically, our number should start at one and keep it smaller. So let's see what happens here. 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125. Yeah, it's working. I mean, that's that's what it's supposed to be. You notice our variable gives us the exact value, but it rounds it after a while. So let me just run that again. See, we're good up until about three decimal places, I think. You know, yeah. As soon as it hits three decimal places, it starts rounding the speech bubble, but our variable up here keeps the exact value. So there we go. We divided it by two instead of multiplying it by two. Um, we could do both. We could say... Um, you know, the first time, the first thing I want you to do is I want to, I want you to multiply my number. I want you to multiply my number by two. And then directly after that, I'm just going to duplicate this block. Directly after doing that, um, I want you to wait. Uh, I want you to say it again. Sorry, ignore that. Uh, so I want you to, I want you to multiply by two. And then I want you to wait for a second while you're telling us what it is. And then I want you to, um, then I want you to divide it by two instead of multiplying. So I can, uh, I could do two extra blocks in there. Sorry. Uh, instead of dividing it by two, cause I'll just keep getting the same numbers. Maybe I'll divide it by three. So uh, I will look. 
it's kind of tough. Sometimes you accidentally drag the, you know, it's hard to drag things into the right spot. All right, so anyway, uh, this time I'm using two different operations. The first thing Scratch is going to do is he's going to say what the number is. Then he's going to take the number and multiply it by two and say it again. And then he's going to take the number and divide it by three. So, you know, part of the time it's going to go up by multiplication. Then it's going to go down and then it's going to go up. Then it's going to go down and it's going to go up and it's going to go down. Um, just by using multiplication and division, you can put addition and subtraction in there. So basically, once you've got a variable and it's a number, you can do whatever you want, right? Okay, so, you know, part of that process is, uh, you know, experimenting with, with what's going on in here. Um, let's, what if, he, what if we say Scratch is going to um, pick a random number? Okay. So, say, hey, Scratch, uh, I don't need the number variable anymore. Don't really... Well, I guess this whole video is about variables, isn't that why? Maybe I should put a variable in there. <laughs> uh, Dunbar. Okay, so uh, we're going to set the number variable to a random number between 1 and 10. So, and then he's going to say that number. So the whole point of this one is, uh, instead of us having a set, having a set sort of, uh, we're adding 5 every time, or we're multiplying by 2 and dividing by 3 every time, now we're not going to know because it's going to pick a random number and it's just going to tell us, hey, I picked 7 this time, I picked 3 next time. So Scratch for 10 times in a row is going to is gonna set our variable. He's going to say, I'm picking a number in my head and it's 6, and I'm going to set my variable to 6, and then I'm going to tell you what it is. So I don't know what he's going to say this time. It's going to be different every every time, I think, unless he picks the same number twice, which is possible. Uh, so there you go. He picked the name, same number ooh, three times in a row. Now he's done. So he picked 10 numbers. He picked three threes. I can't remember what else he picked. But if I run it again, it's going to be a completely different sequence because it's it's random, right? Every time he picks a new number, it's a random number. So you're not going to get the same sequence twice in a row. You can use that to do to do some fun things too. Um, you know, if you're if let's say you're making a little spaceship game and you want to bounce, uh, you want to bounce some balls around the screen, or you want to have a uh, you know a laser on the ground shoot in a random direction. Um, you can program it so you don't even know where the, the cannon's going to shoot. It's, you know, if there's a little cannon down here, it could shoot at this angle. It could shoot straight up. It could shoot straight across. Um, so using that little random variable there uh, can be neat when you're making a little game inside Scratch. And there's a shark game that I'm going to take you through that I made uh, I made a couple of years ago. It's just a good kind of get you going as far as what you can build for games in Scratch. Uh, okay, so we've talked about some variables and... Um, uh, maybe I'll do a quick if statement with a variable. I'll, I'll make a new variable, and I'll, I'll just call this one um, hi, hi, okay? And uh, so my whole point in this one is maybe I'll add another sprite. These are called sprites, by the way, in case I didn't mention that before. Uh, maybe I'll add another sprite to my to my project, and we'll get uh, and we'll get uh, Scratch to talk to uh, uh, who's pointing the right way here. Is everybody pointing the wrong way? I can turn them around. I just choose not to. All right, whatever. We'll take the center, and then I will. I will rotate the center. Except I forget how to do it. Just one second here. My center has some options. I think if I put negative, oh, there it is. That's what I wanted. This one, right? There. Okay. So, aha, I was in the X's and the Y's, or it was in the direction. Negative 90, that makes sense. Okay, so Mr. Centaur is uh, is pointing towards Scratch the Cat. I will have uh, I will have you put in a word here, and if you say hi, then Mr. Centaur will also say hi. So uh, I will ignore that and we'll just we won't move these these folks at all. Okay, so when it's kit, uh, clicked, what do we need to check? We need to get input from the user first off. So uh, we need to find where the input was, is, and to be honest with you, I can't even remember. Ask, there we go. Okay, it's an ask block. So ask, what do you want to say? And you can always tell which sprite you're working on down here. So right now I'm working on the cat sprite. Um, perhaps this would be better in my centaur sprite. So if I click on the centaur sprite, I should be able to just drag this into the center. Back into the center, center. 
Okay, that didn't work. It should have worked, but whatever. I'm going to go to my centaur and I'll just duplicate it. So, events, when this is clicked, uh, what was I looking for? I was looking for Mr. Centaur to ask, what's your name and wait, and then uh, there will be an answer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the variable high. Instead of setting it to zero, this time we're going to use a word. Okay, so set high to, and for every ask, there is also an answer. I find my ask again. It was in, not sound. Where's my ask? Say, say, say. Show, show, show. Go to sound. How could I lose it? I just had it. Oh, there it is, blue. Sorry, I thought it was purple. Um, the answer. So every ask has an answer. So I'm going to set the variable high to answer. Okay. Now I'm also, I'm also going to check. Okay. So all that happens now is uh, when I run this program, I don't need the number variable. I just need the high variable. Uh, when I run this, Scratch is currently saying, what do you want to say? And I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want Scratch to do anything. I want Mr. Centaur to say, what's your name? And nothing else happens. But you see this little answer block pops up here and I can type in whatever I want and say that's my answer. Okay? So if I say, uh, Mr. Centaur asks, what's your name? And then you type in, okay, okay um, whatever you type in, I'm going to set high, the variable high to be your answer. And then maybe I'll just say it back to you. Uh, so I will display... I will say hi. And that doesn't mean I'm saying the word hi. That means I'm saying whatever you typed in right back to you. So Scratch really isn't doing anything right now. Mr. Centaur says, hey, what's your name? And I'll say Brennan. And then he's just going to say Brennan. Okay, not much of a conversation. But you get the idea of how variables can be words as well. Um, all right, so let's go back to the Centaur code. And instead of saying what, instead of him just parroting it back to me, uh, let's set some logic so that if, okay, so this is also a bit of a conditionals lesson here, if, okay, uh, high is equal to high, or if answer is equal to high. So we got to find our answer. I could just duplicate it, but I need one of these little diamond shaped blocks. So that's in operators. So uh, I need an equal block. Uh, where's my equal block? There it is. Okay. So if high because that's what the variable is, is equal to hello. Okay. So the only way this is going to work is if what you type in is hello, then what we're going to do is you're going to use a broadcast. There's lots of different ways to do that, but I want to show you a broadcast. Okay. So it's an event. What I'm going to broadcast, okay, if the person puts in hello, I'm going to broadcast a new message, and that message is going to be he said hi or he said hello okay broadcast is exactly what it sounds like it's like i'm broadcasting to the world that he said hello so our logic again is we're talking about mr centaur he asks what is your name and he waits until you type something in you type something in whatever you type in is stored in the variable high okay so the answer which is what you typed in is stored to high if what you typed was hello and we're going to broadcast to the world, he said hello. And that's all that's going to happen so far. We have to program Scratch so that he picks up that broadcast, just like a radio receiving a message from or receiving a signal from a radio tower. So let's skip off of Mr. Centaur right now. Let's go back to Sprite. Okay, now we don't have to have this green flag click because we've already got it set up in Mr. Centaur. What we do need to do is when I receive, okay? So when I receive... He said hello, because that's the only one I have in there. You can have many messages. I've just got the one right now. He said hello. So if you happen to type in hello, okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to have Scratch the Cat say hello back. Okay, so say hello for two seconds. Now, here's the deal. If we program this properly, this is very simple use of broadcasting and if statements. If we did this properly, when we run the program, we should be able to enter hello and have Scratch the Cat say, hello. If we enter anything else, Scratch the Cat shouldn't say anything. Okay, so let's see if it works. What's your name? Why did I ask what's your name? I should have been 
what do you want to say? I'm going to stop the program and fix that so it's less confusing. Okay, instead of asking me what's my name, say what what do you want to say to Scratch? Or what should I say to Scratch? Huh? Okay, so what should I say to Scratch? The centaur is basically asking us. Let's run it. Okay. Ooh, what should I say to Scratch? You should say nothing. And Scratch says nothing because I didn't use the magic word. Right? Ignore this up here. It's just telling you that the variable high is currently set to nothing. But we don't have Scratch program to do anything unless it says hello. All right, so let's try it again. What should I say to Scratch? This time, let's say hello. And it, I use the same capital letter. I use the exact same spelling because that's important. Well, then Scratch says hello. If I had used, this is very important when it comes to syntax or words. Um, if I had said hello, but I hadn't put a capital letter in it, I guess it still worked. That's odd. It probably shouldn't have. What if I just say hi? Now Scratch doesn't say anything. So I guess that what that means is it's case insensitive. Um, most programming languages are not like this. So don't get too used to it. But if I type in capital hello, like I'm yelling at him, he's probably still going to say hello. Oops. Hello, capital everything. And Scratch still has, says hello. So clearly it's it doesn't matter the case that you use uppercase, lowercase for Scratch, but it does matter for every single other thing we're doing for this course, so just keep that in mind. So there's a quick example of how you can use uh, broadcasting. So again, here's my Centaur code, and then my, my, my Scratch code is, my Scratch the Cat code is very simple. All it does is I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for the Centaur to say hello, or I'm looking for the user to type in hello. If they do, I'm gonna say hello to them. If they type in anything else, uh, I'm not going to say anything, you know, so, hey, uh, what should I say to Scratch? You are a stupid cat. And Scratch says nothing because he's just utterly perplexed by that undignified behavior from you and the centaur. Okay, hopefully that helps a little bit. Again, I'm always ready to send you examples, but I, I think playing with this stuff is the best way to go about it. So play with it. If there's something you want to do and you can't figure out, shoot me an email and uh, we'll figure it out together. So... Carry on.